Hey there guys and welcome back to your third lesson in JavaScript. In this lesson we're going to look at JavaScript loading strategies, we're going to learn what happens in the background when the browser tries to load and execute our JavaScript, and we'll focus on the async and defer attributes to see the most efficient way to do this. As always, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to click that like and subscribe button down below and choose all notifications so you never miss an update. Alrighty guys, so welcome back to lesson number three. Now, before we begin, very quickly, you might have noticed that I've switched from the light theme we were using in the previous lessons to this dark theme. Now, I did that purposefully because I felt like the light theme was a bit harsh on the eyes, especially if you're a night owl like me, but let me know in the comment section down below what you prefer. Shall we switch back to the light theme or should we go ahead with this dark theme? Okay. So in the previous lesson then, we looked at the different ways that we could add JavaScript to our project. We saw that we could do this in two ways, internally in between script tags, like we got down here, okay? They wrote our JavaScript code in between them, as well as the preferred way, which was externally in a separate file with a .js file extension, and then linking to that file with a source attribute like we've done up here. We also learned that we need to be careful not to harm the loading performance of the page. And depending on where and how we add our scripts, this will have an influence on the overall loading time. Adding our script tag in the head section and then trying to load our script from there could cause a problem because if our JavaScript is actually referencing our HTML, then it won't work because the browser has not yet rendered the HTML that is being referenced. Then we saw that a classic fix for this was to actually move this from here and place our script tag just before the closing body tag, like so. This way, the HTML has time to render completely before coming onto our JavaScript. But the problem here was that our JavaScript is now being blocked until after our HTML is fully loaded. So it seems that we've got a bit of a problem here. We can't place our script tag before our HTML and we can't place it after. So what exactly can we do? Well, this is where the attributes async and defer come to the rescue. Now, before we look at those, let's first understand what happens in the background when we try to load a JavaScript plainly. So let's go ahead and cut this from here. Okay, and paste it back up in here. I'm then gonna go ahead and change this to long.js and let's add another script tag in here called short.js. And just a quick side note, it's not really important what's in these files here, we're just using them as examples. Okay, so here then, we're loading in our JavaScript plainly as we normally would. Let's look at a visual representation of what happens in the background. Okay, so this is a visual representation of what happens when we load in our JavaScript plainly. So here you can see we're not using async or defer. Okay, this is what our script tag looks like. And so what happens then is the browser starts up here, okay? and it comes down, so we start passing our HTML. As soon as it comes down to here and hits our JavaScript files, let's see what happens. The first thing it does is download our JavaScript, just zoom in here. And as you can see, when this happens, our HTML is actually being blocked from loading. Once the file is downloaded, it then executes, and again, our HTML file is still blocked. Once our files have been downloaded and executed, our passing resumes until the document is ready. So this is what happens then when we load in our JavaScript plainly. During the download and execution phase of our JavaScript files, the passing of our HTML is momentarily paused. So now let's look at async and defer. Now, these are both known as Boolean attributes. Booleans are values that are either true or false. And don't worry, we'll look more at Booleans as we progress through the series. So async and defer then are similar in their usage, but there are also key differences. Let's see how they work. Let's start with async. To use it, we simply add the keyword or attribute rather, async, in the opening body tag, like so. We'll add async to this one as well. And now let's see what happens when we use async. Okay, so with async then, our JavaScript file downloads at the same time as our HTML file. It's not being blocked. And then once our files are downloaded, they execute or run straight away. And during that phase, our HTML is blocked from being passed, as you can see here. But once our files have been executed, then we resume the passing of our HTML until the file is ready. So a key difference then between async and loading in our files plainly is that with async, our JavaScript files download at the same time as our HTML. It's only during the execution phase of our JavaScript that our HTML is blocked. So already then, we can see that there's an advantage to using async over plainly loading in our files. If we take a look at our files here, long and short, short.js being the smaller file, will probably load and execute first. Here's another important thing to know about async. Async works on a load first, run first basis. So as soon as the script is downloaded, it will execute or run straight away. So even though long.js is placed first in our HTML, async will simply ignore this order and execute scripts as they are downloaded. So it's best to use async if the scripts do not reference each other or rely upon each other to work. Because once again, async doesn't care about the order that you put your scripts in. A good use case for async would be something like an analysis tool such as Google Analytics. Such a file has no added value for the front end user, so async will be ideal for performance and security reasons there. Okay, so that's async. Let's now take a look at defer. Let's go ahead and change our attributes from async 
to defer and this one as well and now let's see what happens so once again then we start the parsing of our HTML and when we get to our JavaScript file just like async our files are downloaded at the same time as the parsing of our HTML so once again the loading of our HTML is not being blocked However, you can see that there's a key difference. With defer, the execution of our file is actually deferred, hence the name defer, until after our HTML has been passed and is ready. Once it is ready, our JavaScript file executes. So this is actually amazing. Notice that our HTML is never blocked. It's free to continue passing until it's ready. And the other key difference with defer is that unlike async, the relative order of our files is kept. So even if short.js being the small file probably loads first, because the order of our scripts has long.js first, once they're both downloaded, then during the execution process down here, it's long.js that will be executed first and then short.js, because once again, defer respects the relative order that we've placed our scripts in. This makes defer the attribute of choice when scripts depend on each other to work and run, and when it's important that scripts run in the designated order. To summarize then, async and defer are similar in that they both download the JavaScript at the same time as the HTML, but the difference is async executes the file straight away, blocking the loading of our HTML in the process, as well as ignoring the relative order, whereas defer defers or postpones the execution of our JavaScript until after the HTML is fully loaded, ensuring that the HTML is never blocked, and once files are ready to be executed, defer respects the order that we've put them in. So here, since we're using defer, long.js will execute first and then short.js. So use async when the scripts are independent of each other, that is to say they don't reference or need each other to work, and use defer when you want to be sure that scripts load in a certain order. Now you might be asking, okay, great, now what's the best and most efficient way to load our scripts? Well, the best thing to do for speed and efficiency is to place our script tag in the head section and use the defer attribute. So that's how we're gonna be loading in our scripts. So that's it for this lesson, guys. I hope you found it useful and I hope you found the visual representations a useful aid as well. Once again, guys, if you're enjoying the content, don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe down below. In the next lesson, we're going to be looking at JavaScript syntax and comments, a simple but important lesson that you don't want to miss out on. So be sure to tune in and I'll see you on the next one.